welcome to our worship today. We meet in the name of Christ. Grace, mercy and peace be with you all. Wherever you are today, I hope that you'll find a few minutes to worship with our churches of St Mary and St Barnabas and Christ Church. The buildings are now open for private prayer. St Mary's on Saturdays between 10 and 12 and Christ Church on Wednesdays between 9 and 11. You're very welcome to come along if you can. The places seem a bit strange with all the signage and stuff, but we hope the atmosphere which comes from being in a place which has been used for worship for years and years and years will still be there. It's six months since we started our weekly worship videos. Who'd have thought we'd still be preparing them now? I think we've got a format which flows and is helpful to many people. But we're always keen to hear what you think. I have a few regulars that give me feedback uh, every week. Uh, I couldn't catch the cat for this week, sorry. <laughs> Tom will be sharing thoughts on the gospel today. The theme is forgiveness. So, as usual, let's begin our worship with calling to mind the words and actions that have caused each other pain and times when we've not given the encouragement and support that we should have done. I'm blundered into situations with words that have caused hurt and brought people down low. So let's pray. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the throng that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. So let's continue our worship by remembering what we have be been thankful for this week.
Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he couldn't pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owned him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi there. So how many times should we forgive others? Well, Peter, in our reading today, he asked Jesus this very question. He says, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? And he suggests, how about seven times? Peter must have thought he was being more than generous. Back then, a lot of people thought that three times was enough. That's what a lot of rabbis would have taught. So Peter must have been thinking up must have been thinking he was more than generous by suggesting seven times. But Jesus says no, not seven times, but 77 times. Now, I don't think Jesus is saying get a list and, uh, and, uh, and tally off uh, up to 77 and then you can stop forgiving people. I think he was trying to say, don't bother with the list, just, just keep on forgiving. And he illustrates this point with the parable of the unforgiving servant. Now, the servant, he owes the king 10,000 talents. Now, a talent was a large sum of money. In fact, it was a small fortune. Uh, and so if we translate this into our money, a talent was probably a million pounds. So we're probably talking about something like 10 million pounds that this uh, servant owed the king. And when the king asked him to pay it back, um, he can't. And the king orders for him to be thrown into prison with his whole household to pay off the debt. But the servant pleads for mercy and for patience. I need more time, he says. I'll pay you back. But the king, he doesn't just give him more time. He goes further than that. He cancels the debt completely and lets him go free. And with his newfound freedom, the servant bumps into a fellow servant who owes him a hundred denarii. Now, a hundred denarii wasn't a small amount of money. It was probably about three months wages. So in, in our money, it'd probably be, say, let's say about three thousand pounds. And the man who is uh, who owes three thousand pounds, he asks the same request. He says, please be patient with me. I'll pay you back. But this servant, he's not as generous as the king, and he gets his fellow servant thrown into prison. Now, this story, uh, it's, maybe it's a, it's a bit like uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, the world's richest man who owns Amazon, saying to one of his cleaners in the Amazon warehouse, look, you, you've borrowed 10 million pounds, but don't worry, I'm, I'm going to let you off it. And then that same cleaner catching up with another cleaner in the Amazon warehouse and demanding £3,000. 
it's really uh, difficult for us to get our heads round at what a million pounds, let alone ten million pounds. It's it's a it's a vast sum of money which many of us will never have, um, uh, let alone know what to do with. The servant has been forgiven so much by the king, and yet he doesn't show that same forgiveness to his fellow servant. He doesn't let that forgiveness filter down. And for us, God has forgiven us so much. We sing uh, in light of the world written by Tim Hughes. I never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know just how much it cost. So what Jesus is saying is that God has forgiven us way beyond anything we can ever hope or imagine or, or comprehend. And we are to respond to what in comparison is, is a much smaller grievance by showing forgiveness and mercy to others. As the Lord's Prayer says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. There's a copying of that transaction that as we do it, we are forgiven. The original servant, because he didn't forgive, he was uh, thrown into jail for not showing mercy to others. And so we are to forgive as God has forgiven us. And I think in this story, uh, Jesus, he's making the point, he's telling us to remember that at the heart of the Christian message is that God has shown us great mercy and forgiveness through what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that he wants us to, to be like that. He wants us to do the same. In fact, to hold on to unforgiveness is to hold on to poison. It makes us bitter. It makes us resentful and it consumes us. But it ultimately tortures us. As we move forward into beginning to meet again and I'm, I'm aware that the, the government advice has just changed and, and we'll wait to see uh, how that affects the church but as we begin to think about meeting again and what that might look like we're going to need to have a lot of grace and patience and forgiveness for each other. Grace because we can't go back to how things were completely so we need grace to deal with disappointment we're going to need grace because each of us deals with fear and anxiety in, in very different ways. And that will show itself in different ways. And so there are going to be times when we might make wrong judgment calls. We might have different expectations about what is a safe distance or behaviour at this time. And we know that in church life, uh, there are always going to be times when we upset or hurt each other. And probably most of the time there's no uh, real mean intention behind it. But it's, but it's at this place where we need to allow the forgiveness that God has shown us to filter down in how we forgive each other. And I think that's even more the case in our current situation. So we need to be a people above all who bear with each other, who forgive each other just as Christ has forgiven us. So let us spend a moment in prayer. Father, we thank you that you have forgiven us. We thank you for what Jesus did for us on the cross. Help us to be people who are forgiving of other people. And in a moment of quiet, we uh, we just uh, think of anyone that we may need to forgive now. Help us to lay that grievance down and to forgive that person.
In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we pray for the nations whose people are filled with hatred and aggression towards each other, for communities split by distrust and injustice. We pray for people who have been separated from their families, lost their homes, and are so filled with hopelessness and desperation that life seems pointless and empty. May your powerful love, O oh Father, revitalise them and fill them with purpose and hope and inspire the people in power to act in a way which helps and supports those who need it most. Father, we pray for the whole church which you have called together through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for the growth of the church, especially in Humberston, Thurnby Lodge and Nether Hall. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions and power to our witness. Help your church to grow in numbers in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local community through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we pray that we will clearly demonstrate faith, hope and love to all our neighbours, families and friends. Help us to call out and name barriers which divide us and bad behaviour which causes pain. Help us to be reconciled and to be generous with the forgiveness which you so generously give to us through the death of your Son on the cross. May the presence of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit transform our lives. Father, we pray for those who are ill or in pain, for those coming to terms with a terminal illness, and for those who are supporting and loving them. We pray for those who are lonely and have no one to support them. May the presence of Christ and the power of the Spirit hold them and make them whole. Father, we pray for those we know who have been reduced to despair, for those who have suffered grief and are feeling numb from sorrow or loss. We pray particularly for Monica Fifield as she grieves for her son Donald. May the presence of Christ and the power of the Spirit give them hope and comfort. Father, we pray for ourselves and for our needs, the things we have to face this week, our worries and fears, our joys and hopes. May the presence of Christ and the power of the Spirit hold us safe and secure, enfolded in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. One of the key blessings of being a Christian is peace. A deep inner peace, even in adversity. A peace that recognises that we are right with God. We are okay with God. We are at home with Him. I pray you have that. If you don't have that, contact us if you want to talk about this. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. I am the sea. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed today's service. If you have any comments or feedback or ways we can improve this, please let us have them. We are always eager to improve the service and we are glad that more and more people are listening to this. I pray finally, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us. May the Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Bye. <laughs>